welcome to the first video episode of Retro Repair Tips. I'm the Retro Repairman, Cody Thomas, and this week we're going to be going over tearing down the Game Boy Advance SP and replacing the screen overlay. If you've ever had scratches on this thing, or maybe your dog got a hold of it or something like that, well, this guide will show you how to replace that and tear this thing down completely so you can do any kind of mods or anything you need. For this mod, all you're going to need is a small Phillips screwdriver, tri-wing screwdriver, and a little bit of patience. These things can kind of get a little annoying sometimes, but just follow this guide and you'll be golden. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we've got our Game Boy, we've got our tools, and we've got our screen. Let's go ahead and flip it open and take a look on the inside. You'll notice the five screws surrounding the LCD. And if you want to go ahead and skip to just the repair, you can just remove these five right now and get straight to the LCD. But for the purposes of this teardown, I'm going to go ahead and detail the entire process. So go ahead and flip it over, and you'll want to begin by removing the six screws on the bottom. There will be one that's hidden under the battery cover, so we'll start by removing the battery cover. Okay, you'll want to go ahead and remove the first screw on the battery cover. Once you've done that, go ahead and just remove the battery cover and set it to the side. It just flips off really easily. Go ahead and pop the battery out. And you'll see that screw I was talking about, the tri-wing right there in the back. Now go ahead and switch to your tri-wing. We'll start by removing the one under the battery and then the four along all the corners and the one in the cartridge slot. Now that you've got all the screws out, go ahead and remove the bottom cover and set it aside. Now, there are going to be three screws on the motherboard, two directly under the cartridge slot on either side, and one right above the cartridge slot in the middle. Go ahead and remove these three. Now you should be able to lift the motherboard off the case. Be careful though, as when you flip it over, the LCD is still attached and can rip if you're not careful. There will be a brown tab holding the LCD ribbon cable in place. Simply press on either side to remove it, and then the LCD cable will slide out. Once you've got that free, just go ahead and pull the motherboard up. You should be able to slide it right off and go ahead and set it aside for now. Next, you're going to want to go ahead and take a look under the LCD cable. There's going to be one single screw that you're going to need to remove. It's going to be a Phillips. So go ahead and remove that. Once you've got that removed, go ahead and flip it over, or it might just fall out, but you'll see a part that needs to be removed. It's just a piece of the case. Now once you're done with that, you'll notice the buttons. There's the A and B buttons, the D-pad, the start and select buttons, and the brightness button. Go ahead and start by removing all the membranes that make contact with the motherboard. Some pieces may come up with the membranes, but just go ahead and empty them all out into your hand and set them aside where you know where they'll be. Sometimes the speaker will fall out and sometimes it won't, so go ahead and make sure you get that out of there too. Now, you basically just got the screen connected to a plastic shell here, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at the five screws I mentioned earlier. Go ahead and remove those. The first part about this is that there are some plastic rubber kind of guard things that prevent the screen from slamming shut and causing damage to the LCD. So you're going to need to get a prying tool and go ahead and remove those. There's one in each corner, and there's also going to be one in the top middle. So go ahead and remove those and put them sticky side up, somewhere where you won't lose them or have them get stuck to something. I've had that happen too many times. Okay, once you've got those removed, 
go ahead and take a look at the screen. You're going to need your tri-wing screwdriver here. You're going to go ahead and remove the four in each corner and the one in the top middle. Sometimes your screen may have Phillips screws. I've seen this a couple times. But most of the time they're going to be tri-wings. So go ahead and get your tri-wing out and get those taken out. Now then, you've got all the screws out, so go ahead and flip it closed and take the top lid off. It should just slide right off with no trouble. You should be able to lift the LCD up, but do be careful because you need to take the LCD ribbon cable through the slot on the other side before you remove it, or else it will get tangled and it will rip, and you don't want that. So go ahead and just poke it on through the hole, and it should come right out. And with that, you're done. The SP is completely disassembled at this point, other than shoulder buttons, which don't really pertain to this repair, so we'll go ahead and set it up real nice so you can take a look at all the parts. Now all we need to do is turn our attention to the LCD. We're going to go ahead and take the overlay off. It's really easy. All you got to do is pry up on one corner, making sure to take it slow, or the adhesive underneath might rip off. So just take your time. It's not too hard. Go ahead and take a look at the LCD. It's nice and shiny. Now go ahead and get your overlay, and start by peeling off the adhesive off the back so we can place it on the screen. Be careful not to get any dust in this region. I can't stress that enough because these things are really hard to reposition, so you gotta do this in one take. Go ahead and line it up with the LCD on the inside corners, and once you feel that you've got it in the best position, go ahead and stamp it down in all four corners, and then give it a nice sliding motion across the top, the bottom, and the sides. And once you've done that, it's done. Now go ahead and remove the top layer of plastic to expose your brand new shiny screen, so you can play all them games scratch free. Now all that's left to do is simply reassemble the SP. All you gotta do is follow the steps in reverse that you just watched. But for your viewing enjoyment, I'll go ahead and have a sped up version of me reassembling the SP.
So that wasn't too bad, was it? Just took a little bit of patience, and you got that screen replaced. Look at that. It's nice and shiny again, no scratches. Now take good care of these things. I mean, I don't know how you got scratches on in the first place because it closes, but hey, you know, accidents happen. I hope you guys enjoyed this first video episode of Retro Repair Tips, and as always, give me some feedback. Let me know what you guys think is good and what's not. Um, any suggestions for future episodes, any kind of mod request, anything. Just let me know in the comments box below or on my Facebook page, Retro Repair Tips, on my blog. You know, just anything you guys want to see in the future. Thanks for watching. Go play some games. Aw oh, man, it's still broken?